Hey everybody, Anthony Roberts here with AR Creates, and I've got a brand new tutorial for you guys today. Uh, Going to be doing the frosted glass effect in Photoshop. It's very easy, but there's um, some really cool things you can do with it. And I'm going to show you three, kind of three different examples um, of how, how it can be used in some different ways you can incorporate it into your graphics. So... Um, I'm going to jump right in here and get started. And uh, just so you know, I, I try to call out my hotkeys and my shortcuts while I'm doing these tutorials because they're very good to learn. Um, but since I do work on a Mac and a PC side by side, sometimes I say control, sometimes I say command. But just so you know that if I say control or command um, plus a hotkey, you know what I'm talking about whether you work on Windows or Mac. So anyway, get started here. And so the first one I'm going to show you with a gradient. And so if you don't have any gradients, um, you know, you can make one really quick. You could do this with a solid color, but I think with a gradient, it just looks really cool. So first thing we'll do, make your gradient shape. Get that in there. And then we're going to add our shape. And so we need... A rectangle here and I like um, I like one with rounded corners I think it makes this effect look good and want to make sure it's just a solid feel so solid black is easy and then I'm going to go up here on the canvas and just align it um, that way so it's a lot easier to see and then um, now that we have that what we're going to do is take our gradient later and you can either alternate or option drag or command J, control J, duplicate it. But we want to put it above the shape. So you should have your gradient, then your shape, and then another gradient later that's duplicated. Now, the important thing to make sure is that your duplicated layer, make sure it's a smart object. Um, if it wasn't imported as a smart object, right click on it and hit convert to smart object. You want it as a smart object so that it can be changed later on um, and you can adjust these uh, this effect to kind of fit exactly what you want because depending on the image that you use, they could all be different. Okay, so we want to make sure we're on our top gradient layer over here. And we're gonna go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Um, now, you can blur it as much as you want um, it's going to depend on your document size. It's going to depend on the object you're using. Um, but somewhere around the four, four mark, four pixels will work pretty good for what we're doing here. Um, the good thing about it being a smart object is once we get finished, you can go back and adjust the blur if it's too much or too little. All right. So once we have our top layer blurred, if we hide that, you see the shape below it and the regular gradient. So make sure that you're working on the top layer here. Once it's been blurred, you want to go back to filter, filter gallery, and under the distort up here in the top right, you want to make sure glass is selected. Now, here's how we get the glass effect. And so um, there's a couple of different things. Uh, the distortion first, you know, you can adjust that. Obviously, if you add more distortion, you get more of that frosted look almost into like a textured um kind of thing like you'd see like sometimes you see um, like textured glass doors where it's really opaque you can kind of see through it um, but not a lot so the more distortion you add the more it gets in that um, thing what I like to do is um, normally somewhere around the two to four mark depending on the texture that we're using uh, but again this is totally up to you uh, it's just how much of the effect do you want uh, softness is the same way if you adjust your softness all the way to the right. It takes out almost all of that texture. If you bring it all the way down um, to like one or two on smoothness, you get a lot more of that ripple in there, kind of that frosted look. So I'm thinking somewhere around the two, three, four. Um, I'm going to select three, or actually I'm going to go down to two. That kind of gives me the, the texture that I'm looking for. Um, and I'm going to up my distortion just a little bit. All right, so we don't have to work on anything else. You don't have to deal with, um, you can use the scaling, make sure your texture is set to frosted. Um, but uh, right now mine defaulted to 126, which is fine. But if you go up and down again, you can see it just affects the texture. So it's all about what kind of look you're going for. So I'm gonna leave mine back there on 126 where it was at. 
and then select OK. So now our top gradient layer should have that glass effect. Now here's the cool part. What you want to do is right click on that layer, top layer, hit create clipping mask. Um, that is going to clip to the um, rectangle we had below. Now you're thinking, what did it do? You can't really see it much. If you look over here in this corner on the blue, you can kind of see the corner there. Um, you know, in the center of the screen, you can kind of see this glass effect. Okay. To really make it stand out, you want to go back to your rectangle layer, double click on that, and let's add a drop shadow. Now you can kind of see that through there, and then we can adjust our drop shadow depending on um, the look that you're going for. You know, you can put your shadow um, way away from it. You can really spread it out. Um, you can change the size of it. Really just whatever you're looking for. But um, with this right here, now it kind of looks like that glass shape is sort of floating um, off of there, which is what we really want. Now, what you can do past that is if we go up to stroke and we add a stroke around it, and you can select kind of like an off-white color. Um, you know, you can make the size as much as you want. I would make it one, one, uh, four, maybe you want just enough where it kind of gives that separation. Um, we can turn the opacity down just a little bit. So you sort of get that shape there. Um, so anyway, so that's like the really easiest way to do this. And so if you're looking at it on a gradient, it really does look kind of like a opaque um, piece of glass. So that's one way to use this. Um, you know, it's it, like I said, it's kind of the most basic, easiest way. But if you put some text in it, you could really make your graphics stand out. Now, where this effect really looks cool is when you start using it on photographs. And so I want to go up here. And this is the next one that I'm using. So I'm using this uh, photo from Unsplash, and it's just of a bush, um, you know, bushes, a hedge, something like that. So I'm going to take my same rectangle. I'm going to alternate drag it up there on top of this one. So now I have this in the middle. And I'm going to remove all of my effects from it. And then what I'm going to do is the same process. I'm going to drag a copy of um, the leaves on top of that shape. So we're basically just duplicating the first three steps that we did, the first three layers on the gradient, okay? Um, we're gonna do the same thing. Go up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And, you know, we, we don't wanna blur this one as much because we want it to look more like, you know, a little bit clearer glass that we're going through. This is where the effect really stands out. All right, and then we're gonna go to filter, filter gallery. Now you can see a lot more distortion. We can see a lot more in our glass kind of look to this. So if I do this as like one and then I up the smoothness, you know, a little bit to say like three um, and then let's change our scaling down. Let's go down just a little bit so it's not as much. All right, so this is going to be, it's going to be like looking through glass, but um, a lot clearer than we did on the gradient one. So hit OK. And so we're going to right click on that again and create clipping mask. And so again, now we can kind of see the center of our image has got that glass effect while the rest of it does not. All right, so we're going to go back. Let's enable our stroke and our shadow again. And if we double click into this layer, we can adjust it for this. I'm going to turn the stroke off for a minute. Go back to the drop shadow. Make the drop shadow just a little more prominent there as you can see and so now um, it kind of looks like a piece of glass is over it and the cool thing is you could do this with a circle you can do this with a rectangle triangle any kind of shape you can even do this with text which I'm going to show you in the next example but if I add my stroke back maybe I want to take my stroke and I want to you know make it you know blend in use the, the eyedropper kind of get that green color all right, so let's say this is sort of what we wanted, but not quite. The good thing, this is why I told you keep it as a smart object. We can go back to our filter gallery, go back into this, just double click on it, and let's up the distortion, okay? See, and now just by a click, now we've changed it some more, all right? Um, if we wanted it to be a little less blurry, you know, we could do that. We could take the blur down a little bit. 
And then let's go back and adjust our distortion some more. Maybe smooth it out a little bit. Take our scaling back. Um, and so now you can see, you can really get a whole different look out of it just um, simply by changing those. And so this is, like I said, this is a really cool effect. Um, to me, it looks best when it has that frosted look to it. It really gives the impression of it being glass. Um, and there's some other things you could do to it if we really wanted to take it up a notch. Um, you could go back in. We can add um, kind of an inner shadow to it, put some glow around it, you know, adjust the glow. You could really give it a glossy look. Um, you could even turn on your bevel and emboss and, you know, kind of give it a three uh, sort of, you know, 3D chiseled look or something like that. There's really, really endless possibilities of what you want to do. So now it's kind of got that rounded, um, it looks almost 3D-ish, you know, kind of got that glossy edge to it. So um, that's another way to use this on a photograph. Now, the last way, Want to enable this. This is where this gets really cool. Okay, so we're gonna do something a little bit different here. Um, still using my rectangle shape, but what I'm gonna do is draw kind of you know a little bit taller. Saying right here, let's move this out some. Again, we want to take the stroke off. We want to make this a solid black. Okay, and then. Drag our layer, copy a layer above it, make sure it's a smart object. Go back and we're going to do the blur again. Going to blur this one a little bit more. And then we're going to go back to filter gallery. And I want this one to look a little different. So I'm going to play with this a little bit, a little bit more distortion. Smooth it some, not too much. And then we're going to change our scaling back a little bit. Okay, so now we've got this really textured glass look. Save that. Right click, create a clipping mask. And now you see that we've got it here. Let's go back to our rectangle. And let's first, we're going to add a stroke around it. And I'm going to use the eyedropper to select a white from the image there. All right, so we've got this. Um, you kind of see here, it sort of looks like it's here. Now, the cool thing is, if you'll go back to your rectangle layer, hit Control J. Okay, and so now, if you look over here in the bottom right in your layers, you should have a rectangle and then a rectangle copy. Make sure you select the bottom one, turn the effects off of the bottom one, and then you want to hold down Shift if your um, if your if your Photoshop is set to automatically scale like mine's doing when you drag, then you will hold you want to hold down shift so you can just drag it like this and not not have it scale. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna drag it all the way down till it comes out the bottom just a little bit. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is just use my arrow keys. And what I'm trying to do is move this down about even with the shadow on this guy's foot. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just take it in just a little bit right here. I want to kind of center it back up. Uh, maybe make it just a little bit smaller right there. We'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We'll convert it to a smart object. And so as you can see here, starting to sort of make it look like a shadow which is what we want by blurring that. So you just kind of find that right look there. Then we'll move it down some more so it looks like it's sort of floating. And then we can change our layer, uh, layer style to overlay. And so now it looks like you've got this um, glass thing kind of floating here, which to me is kind of a cool idea. You know, uh, you could, you know, you can move it around over here if you wanted to. Let's see, let's get that. You know, if you wanted to make it look further back, you know, we could move move it up here, you know, uh, take your shadow layer and kind of 
you know, move it up under that, make it a little smaller. So there's all different kind of things you can do. You can sort of get this floating look. And like I said, if you wanted to take it even further, you go back in here and start adding a beveled edge to it, um, some shadows, some glow. Uh, you could really do, you know, you could really make this thing look 3D. You could even draw something along the bottom and kind of get that shape give it um, some depth so that's another way to use this um, if you want to make you know kind of this sort of object floating um, but the cool thing is we can also do this with text so if you get you a good bold font you're going to type the word glass we're going to put it over here so one thing you now you can see is this uh, glass is over here and I can just make this a smart object and then make sure my glass layer is on top of that and now when we do create a clipping mask it's going to clip to the word glass over here and now we can go add a you know small stroke to that if we wanted to kind of separate it a little bit and then uh, do that and then uh, I'm going to do the same thing that we did. I'm going to duplicate that layer. Make sure I turn the effects off. And then I'm just going to size it down so that it appears to be the shadow of that. Like it's floating. We will blur that a little bit as well. Change that to overlay or multiply or soft light whichever whichever one looks better you're gonna have to play with your um layer things just to see what matches the best but you take that you know we can move it over here you know the great thing is is no matter where you move it it's going to have that glass effect um it looks really good if you've got some colors and stuff there so anyway that's kind of it. Really quick tutorial on the frosted glass look. Look forward to seeing what you guys make out of this. Um, it's a really cool effect. It's really simple, but it can add a lot to it. So um, if you make something out of this using this tutorial, tag me on Instagram at ARCreates. I would love to see it. I'm always encouraged by how you guys use my tutorial videos. So anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.